I really like it when you decide to work with these small plants. They're much easier to get up into the loft. Well, they may be small now, but consider them like puppies. Sooner or later, they grow up to be big dogs. So is this plant going to become a big dog? This type of arborvitae can get 10 or 15 feet tall. Wow. And what about the rhododendron? Some species of rhododendron will get up 15 feet also. So we really got to think about where we're going to plant these. We have an expression in the business. Put the right plant in the right place. Mm -hmm. Too often, homeowners go to a nursery. They find this nice, cute little plant. They bring it home, <laughs> right. plant it right next to the foundation. And before you know it, it's growing up over the windows or even up to the roof. Uh, well, then what do you do? Well, let me show you. My family and I moved into this beautiful colonial in the fall. There's so much character with this house. It's charming. The problem is this mess that I have here. When we first moved into the home, we had to actually cut back these shrubs. They were completely overgrown, covering up the stairs. It was a hazard. There is a window somewhere back in there. We don't know what to even do with this. And I really do need help. Today, we're going to transform the front of your house. What we have here is a globe arborvitae. Left on its own, it's going to get up maybe 10 or 15 feet tall and almost that wide. Oh, it's too, too big. Too big for the house. And look here, it's been pruned on the outside. There's no growth at all on the inside. We can't even prune this back. So we're going to remove this one. What are we going to replace with it, Roger? We're going to replace it with some plants that are appropriate for the front of the house that aren't going to get too big. This is going to go too, and this little one in here. So we're removing some plants to make way for a proper garden for We the can't front. keep this one? No, there's nothing to save here. It's not worth spending any money on. But here, here we have a specimen we can save. This is a rhododendron. You look here on the end of the branches, you see these flower buds? They're gonna be big purple flowers that are gonna cover this rhododendron in a couple of weeks. It's absolutely a beautiful plant. And it anchors this corner of the house. It's just a great plant, but it's gotten really big. It is very large. But rather than cut it down and take it away, we're going to rejuvenate this by a serious pruning, real hard pruning, bring it back into scale with the house. Okay, that's great. Let's get some tools and get to work. All right. To prune our rhododendron today, we're going to use bypass pruners. Now, if you look, it has a sharp upper blade. So when you close the handles, the top blade bypasses the lower blade, making a nice, clean cut. Now, when we're pruning, we have to consider a couple things. Now, if you look at a stem like that, when you prune, you always want to have the sharp blade towards the tree to make a nice, clean cut. If you turn the, the bypass pruners this way, you're going to end up getting a crush injury on the stem right there, and it's not going to heal well or, or grow out for us the way we want. The other thing is where to prune. You don't want to prune in the middle of a stem like that. We want to make a cut just above a live leaf, like right here. Now that'll heal nicely and put out new growth. Okay, let's go to work. Now, that's how much I took off the top of the plant. That's almost three feet we're going to be lowering that down. Roger, should I go further in on this one? Absolutely. Cut it back even harder than that. There so you go. to about here? Yep, much better. Okay. Great. Roger, is this a good time of year to prune? Well, if we were pruning the plant lightly, just shaping it a little bit, I would wait until midsummer when these flowers had gone by, and then I'd come in and do my prunings. But today we're cutting this plant back hard. That's why we're doing it this time of year before the flowers come out so that the plant can fill in with all new growth. It's a perfect time for that type of pruning. So what do you think? I can't believe how much better this looks. Yeah, we just took a little bit off Oh, it. just a little. But we got to remember, in two or three weeks, this is all going to bud out and start filling in. That's great. Now it's time to attack the arborvitaes. With hand shears. Oh, no, no. We have something much bigger for that. <laughs> the branches and I'll toss them out to you. Don't you come in there. All right, you stay right here. Well, now you can see we're left with a stump. We could come in here with a shovel and a grub hoe and dig like crazy and get this whole thing out. It's really a lot of work. Or we can just come in with a saw and flush cut it, let it decompose. It won't sprout out. We'll just work the planting around it. All right, let's cut it. <laughs> I brought you a few of my favorite plants. What I love to do is lay the plants out in the bed and get the spacing just right before we do any planting. I love the colors. Now, if you look on the front of the bed here, we're going to have to cut the grass out and make the bed bigger so we can get the plants in and some mulch. The color is the key to a good planting, to have color all season long. For us, it's going to start with this vinca. 
early spring with these blue purple flowers on it, it's going to form a nice ground cover mass for us in the front of the bed. And then we'll be looking at the azalea. This is azalea, Delaware Valley white. Beautiful, clear white color. A medium growing plant that's never going to get up to 8 or 10 feet tall. Then we can look for the knockout rose to be blooming. Isn't that beautiful? That is a beautiful one. And it's going to rebloom all season long. Now, not all our color is going to come from flowers. This is euchre. And the reason I planted it is this beautiful chartreuse and probably wine red on the bottom of the leaf. It has a little flower, but I love this color. That's why I put it in here. That is great. In early summer, peonies. See these buds? We're going to have huge, big red flowers on this that last a pretty long time. That's great. And next to it, we have something special. This is a double blooming daily. It'll flower once in three or four weeks, and then two or three weeks after that, it's going to have the flowers on it again. What color? Yellow. It's going to be really interesting for this garden. And way here in the back, Miscanthus. This is a great grass. It's going to grow up here, and in the fall, it's going to be spectacular with all the seed heads it's going to have on it. And over here, we have a holly. Now, this is going to be nice because it's going to grow up and get big and balance off with the rhododendron to give us evergreen on this end of the bed. And do we have to trim this back? No, we're going to let this grow up into a tree. Now, if you look right here in the front, see these little white flowers that are coming out? They're going to be berries. So you're going to have berries on this in the fall. It'll be really pretty. And then you have these beautiful green leaves all went along. You ready to get planting? I am. All right, I'm going to go along and cut an edge on the bed. What I want you to do is take your square shovel and just scoop that grass out, just the grass, and put it in the wheelbarrow. Now this is one of the most important lessons I can teach you about planting. You always want to dig the hole twice as wide as the root ball is, but you don't want it any deeper. You want that plant to sit at level or maybe a little above the existing level, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pop this plant out of the pot. And this is what we call a plant that's root bound. It's been growing in that pot for so long that the roots, instead of growing out, they're now growing around in a circle. What we have to do is we have to tease those roots out so they'll grow out into the existing soil. So I'm just going to take this claw and rip away at it. Is this going to hurt the plant? No, it's not going to hurt the plant at all. In fact, it's going to help it grow. If we left these on, that the plant would just grow around in that one area and it could dry out very easily. This way here, the roots are going to grow out into the soil and the plant's going to be healthier. But you can see it just takes a little work to get them broken up. And that root ball is so hard that there's no way that any water could get in there either. So we're really helping the plant. Now, if you look, you can see how we've already got these just starting to pull away from the ball a little bit. That's what we want. We want them to start growing out. All right, that's how I want it to look before I put it in the hole. One thing I'm going to do before I put it in the hole is to add a little starter fertilizer to the bottom and to the backfill. I'm just going to mix it in here. One of the things I always like to teach people is to look for the face of the plant, which is the best side, and present that out. In this case, we want it to be out where you're going to walk in and out of the house. So I think it looks pretty good like it is. So we're just going to take and set it in the hole. Height looks good. Now we'll just take the shovel, use the shovel, or your hands, whichever you prefer. Mix that in and we'll just backfill it. The most important thing for you to do this year is water. At least once a week, give these a good drink because that's going to determine the success of our planting. Okay. Now when you have something that's bald and burlap like the holly is, you've got to treat it a little different. The first thing I do is I cut a little hole in the burlap up in top here. Because I want to find out where the root flare is. Very often we get these plants and they actually have a lot of soil on top of the trunk. Yeah, just what I thought. There is a lot of soil on top of this plant. So what we're going to do, instead of planting it this high, we're going to raise it up and we're going to take it, plant it this high and take that excess soil off the top. Okay. So right now I'm just going to put a little more of this good soil back in the hole. I've already got the fertilizer in there. How's that look Looks like that? Looks pretty good. Okay. I'm going to take and cut some of these strings off so I can get at the cage. So you just take and slice those from me all the way around. I'm going to pull the cage out and then using the bolt cutters, I'm going to cut it off. All right. Now what I'm looking for is called the root flare. See how we're starting to get a little wider right there? Okay. That's where I want the soil to be. You can see how high this is. So have to take that down? I'm going to take it down. Now, if you look, you can see how compacted all this soil is on the side of the plant. So we're just going to take the claws and loosen that all up. Now, this is a really important step. We're putting down a two-inch layer of pine bark mulch. That's going to hold down the weeds, and it's also going to hold moisture in your soil. 
That doesn't mean you can't water. You have to water this new planting twice a week for the first two weeks and then once a week after that. Oh, it's great. Thank you so much. It's such a transformation from the shrubs earlier. It covered up my whole house. You couldn't even see it. Now I'm going to be the envy of the neighborhood. <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. It's plastic, it has a long handle, and on the end it has a green funnel. Yeah. And what you do is you stand it up, and you pump it, and oh, you know. Yeah. yeah. What is it? I know what it is. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. I got this one. Long yeah. handles to give away. Yeah? You guys are going to want one of these, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, let's see. I need a toilet seat. Oh! <laughs> toilet seat. Here we go. Tommy, hold this for me, will right. you? Yeah. Hey, now, yeah. listen. If you're the guy to back up the toilet, and you've got to plunge it, Something like this Old is faithful. fine, yeah. absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, but if somebody else backs up the toilet <laughs> and you've got to plunge it, you're gonna want to put a little distance between you and the victim. You want to get in there with a long handle? Just... Father-in-law. <laughs> wow. Don't get him in trouble. Yeah. It's the guest plunger. That's not. Nice. <laughs> Take that off your nose. You know, you got an annoying little bug flying around your house. You yeah. can wrap up a newspaper and you can whack him with a newspaper. Yeah. You can even take a towel. <laughs> Boom, get them out with Well, I've always used a hammer. I found a hammer that works really well, but I found it did a lot of damage to the wall. You know, you can't reach up, but you can get it with a hammer, but you just yeah. oh, about a dent in the wall. Anyways, this is a kinder, gentler bug catcher. Go up to them nice and slow, put it on their leg. A couple of pumps. It sucks oh, them right up in. Well, yeah, it sucks them right up into this little can so you can see them flying around. Yeah, yeah. Take them over, you open the door. And so catch and release. Yeah. Catch and release. So we can come back to bite okay. you on another day. That's right. <laughs> You'll never see the neon green that's coming at you. Give me that thing. Yeah. Now, we all should know CPR, right? You oh, never know yeah. that. Yeah. But a lot of people don't want to commit to CPR, you know? Yeah. Shouldn't yeah. you so, commit to CPR? No, no. So have a heart attack. Go ahead. Me? Yeah. Go really? Go. We'd like that, wouldn't you? That's right. Yeah. You want me to lie down? Yeah. Oh. So with that, you know, Man Kevin down. is now Man in down. trouble. Oh. Man down. So with this, I could get down on my hands and knees, but that yeah. would be commitment. So with this, you know, I can just pump this. This is all I get? Hi, can you send a car? Yeah, one with the little uh, bubble on the top, the siren, yeah. yeah. If they're going by, see if they can give me a black coffee. Okay. You want a coffee? No sugar. Okay. Guys, okay. guys, no, 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 I'm dying down We're here. We're all dying yeah, down yeah, here. Shut up. I'm going to knock them out. <laughs> Not a chance. No. <laughs> guys, what this actually is used for, by the way, that's some of the worst stuff you've ever come up with. This is a weed killer applicator. Usually when you get weed killer, it comes in a bottle yep. like this with a spray mm -hmm. nozzle on yep. the end, and you go around and you spray. Well, not only do you get the weeds, but you get your plants in your lawn, too, and it kills them. Mm -hmm. This, you just put the weed killer inside the cylinder, put this over the weed, and then pump it, and it sprays just the weed and doesn't get any other plants or grass all mm -hmm. the way around it. That actually makes some sense. Yeah, it does. Hey, fellas, any chance that ambulance is coming? you still around? Yeah. I hope so. I'm waiting for the coffee. We'll call you. We'll call you. We'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> So Richard, this is our master bedroom, and it used to be my daughter's bedroom for like 30 years. And she would wake up in the morning and she'd say, Mom, I couldn't sleep. The noise in that heating system is terrible. And you thought she was crazy? I did think she was crazy. <laughs> and now? And now she thinks, you are. She thinks we're both crazy. <laughs> so what's the sound that you hear? Well, in the, in the morning, like the water will rush in along the front wall here, and the uh, fins would tingle, and then it hit the... In the corner of a bang. Make a big bang? Yeah. All right, I gotta hear that for myself. Why don't you turn the thermostat up in the hallway, all right? All right, so this is copper fin baseboard. It goes right around the, looks like all the walls in this room. And let's just sit quiet and see what we hear. Can you hear the bang here? Good. You're not crazy. Thank you. <laughs> a little bit of a ticking sound right here. I actually hear a creak, too, right here in the corner. Have you heard that before? Yes. Yeah, All right. That's in there. So why don't we do this? Can you turn that thermostat off again? Yeah. And, Judy, I'm going to get these baseboard covers pulled okay. out and see what's going on here. Okay, guys. What you've got is a pretty conventional copper fin baseboard system. You can see there's two pipes that start way over in the corner, and they come this way. This is copper pipe. It's heating water in it. And here's the fins, and that's going to heat up the air. Now, this water goes through the pipe all the way to, to an elbow right here, goes all the way down that side of the house, it turns, it comes back, and then it comes all the way back this way. Now what happens is, when that, this got installed, it was a certain length, but when you heat up a pipe, it wants to get longer. How much can it expand to? A hundred feet of baseboard. If I raised it by a hundred degrees, it would get almost an inch longer. So there's really no place for this to go. It's fixed in that corner, it's fixed in this corner. So look what happens. You wow. see this right here? Yeah. See how this pipe is bowed? So now it's bowed out and it's trying to hit this cover and making a banging noise. So what I need to do is give this copper pipe a place to expand. And I've got a couple ways to do that. We'll do that here in the other corner. But it starts by me going to the basement, turning off the heating system, getting the water out of these pipes. Okay. All right, Roy, what you've got here is an oil-fired cast iron boiler. Here's the burner right here. It heats up water inside this boiler. 
Here's the circulator pump that pushes the water through the zones. Now you've got four zones. You've got first floor, you've got uh, laundry. Here's our second floor zone right here, and here's your patio. I only want to get the water out of this zone. So I'm going to close off all the other zones right here. This one's open. And now I'm going to drain down the water from just that one zone. Now the other thing I like to check is the water temperature on the boiler. And you can see that you're over 200 degrees. And that's really too hot. What should it be? Well, I don't think you ever need any more than 180 degrees. So what I'm going to do is turn this down. Right? And that actually means that that pipe won't expand as much as it used to either. Because the hotter you make it, the more it wants to expand. Yeah. Let's go back upstairs. Now the baseboard from the master bedroom continues right here into the adjoining office. And this is the point where I told you it returns back on itself. So look at this. This has actually been cut so long that it's actually touching this back wall. That means it's got no room to expand. So what I want to do is actually shorten the baseboard. I'm going to take about one inch of the pipe away and one inch of the element away and actually give the baseboard room to grow. All right, so I could cut it with this. This is a mini hacksaw. But I've got a great tool for this job. It's called an imp. It's a cutter designed to get into tight spaces like this, and it gives a really clean cut. Okay. Just grab me a rag, Roy. Thank you. To give myself a clean place to cut the pipe, I'm going to remove some of these fins from the heating element. I use aviation snips to cut the aluminum. All right, I'm going to cut the bottom pipe by the same amount that I cut the top pipe. I'm going to mark it and cut. To join these pieces of pipe back together, I'm going to use a pair of couplings. These are three-quarter copper couplings. I'm going to apply some flux and solder them together. All right, so at the end of this run, there is now plenty of room. I can actually stick my finger right in there so it can expand perfectly. But we have more work to do in the master bedroom. All right, Roy, by shortening that baseboard over there, we've taken care of this whole wall. But on this wall, it's something different. These pipes are pinned in this corner. They're pinned in that corner. So I really can't shorten the baseboard like I did in that room. So for this one, we've got to do something different. These are actually flexible connectors. They can work like a shock absorber. So as the pipe wants to expand and contract, this can absorb it and make sure there's no expansion noise. For this, we're just going to cut the pipe. We're going to clean it. We're going to flex it and solder it just like we did the couplings. I want to show you one more thing that can reduce noise. Now these are called carriers, and they're a plastic piece that's designed to sit at the bottom of the fin right there. And what happens is it can allow that fin to expand and contract backwards and not have that ticking noise that you heard before. All right, so these will clip right here where the, the hanger bracket is. Now I also discovered something else. You want to see your noise, Roy? Look at this. Love to see it. <laughs> Look at the backside right here. See how that baseboard for the last 50 years has been expanding so much that it's scraped every bit of the paint off. Wow. It's just been pushing right here and jamming into that corner. That's where it was. All right, so we're going to we're going to fix that. All right, flex connectors are in, systems refilled, covers are on. That baseboard should be nice and quiet. Thank you, Richard. We are looking forward to a great night's sleep and you deserve it. Now, if you have a problem, make some noise. Drop us an email. Maybe we'll come and see you. Till next time, I'm Richard Thuy for Ask This Old House. All right, these covers are just about buttoned up. Next time on Ask This Old House, I'm going to take a crack at fixing this walkway. So, Ron, your team is going to be removing all of this mold on the underside of the roof. How are you going to do it? Oh, well, we use pelletized dry ice. comes out of the gun. It's to high speed. It explodes into a vapor. That energy blows the mold right off the sheet. And we'll ask, what is it? Ask This Old House has much more to show you. To see entire episodes anytime, just go to video.pbs.org. This Old House magazine, the companion to the television series, 
provides advice from our experts that you've come to know. You can use your credit card to order 10 monthly issues for $10. Just call 1-800-221-5900.